All right, so James and Jennifer Crumley, the parents of Ethan Crumley, the Oxford High School shooter, have been charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, as they should. Now, let's get into this tea and what is going on. If this is your first time to my channel, I am Alain Garcon. Welcome back. And yeah, this, this story is really crazy. This part of my channel we call Long Story Short. We take stories that are really long, newsworthy stories that are going on right now, and we basically talk about them. But I try to talk a little fast and get to the point and let everybody know what is going on because this is some crazy mess. Let's take a seat and let's break this story down piece by piece and figure out where everything went wrong and where we're at right now. November 30th, there was a school shooting in Oakland, Michigan, Oxford High School, which is about 45 minutes from Detroit, reported a shooting and a shooter was loose in the school and that there were victims and injuries. Boom. That was around 1 p.m. Police then came to the school, arrested Ethan Crumley, the suspected shooter, and took him to a juvenile detention center because he is underage. He is 15 years of age. Can't take him to an adult jail, but... We're getting to the part of the story where he ain't, we ain't treating him like a child. We're, I'm, I'm going to put it like that, but we're getting there. We're getting there. He shoots at random. He goes in the bathroom, comes out of the restroom, starts shooting in the hallway. This is what surveillance cameras in the school and police are reporting. This is the evidence that has been found. He basically came out of the bathroom with this gun and he started shooting students. He killed four students. One died in a police car on the way to the hospital and another died the following day, which was Wednesday, December 1st, at the hospital. The ages range from 14, 16, 17, and 17. So this tells you that this shooting was at random. All of these students were in different grades. Definitely, if anyone has been to high school, and I can definitely speak for high schools in America, those age groups do not blend. They don't go together. One is just getting into high school, another is leaving. So like... This was at random, and this student was a 15-year-old sophomore that did the shooting. So, they probably didn't know any of the students either. So, once the student is arrested, and which was super traumatic, there are videos while the shooting was taking place of students recording in the classrooms. You can see them barricading the doors. You can see them on the phone, meaning that they were probably talking to loved ones, parents, family, and friends that weren't at the school, possibly talking to each other in different classes to figure out what's going on because kids are very phone savvy and they can figure out what's going on in a building that they can't walk around and face-to-face -face communicate. We built this virtual world, so. This is what's going on. The video is so chilling because, like, you just... One, I'm scared watching it, even though knowing that nothing graphic is going to happen in the video or violence is going to happen in that video, per se. It's just really nerve-wracking to be somebody that's been through, the, like, been through the public school system and you really, like, your, kid, your parents drop you off and the kids are just there. Like, you're just, your parents don't really know what goes on at school. And they would like to think that you're safe, but when you're at school, you know, you know what you're getting into, and you know it, it it's it's not as safe as your parents would like. So in this video, you literally see the students listening to somebody at the door. The teacher is trying to listen because someone at the door is telling them it's okay, you can open up the door. But then the students hear the person on the other side of the door say, It's okay, just open up the door, bro. And they all freaked out because they're like, Why would a cop be saying bro to us? That's a red flag, red flag. And in this video, you just see everybody go, red flag, red flag. And at that point, that fight or flight turned on. And those th those kids ran out of the window. Like, literally, it was a first floor, uh, first story window. They ran out, ran across the courtyard, and they were ushered in by a group of sheriffs on the other side of the courtyard. So, reports have shown since police have reviewed the surveillance tapes in the school that Ethan, the shooter never knocked on any doors he just really was shooting at random had no real target no real direction he was going it was just he decided that he was gonna let off some rounds so it is pretty definite for me this is alleged because this part is not confirmed whether or not it was definitely a police officer at the door it could have been a student you know what i'm saying saying hey everything is good y'all can come out like we all are just going to a safe place we don't really know who that person was, but it was not Ethan. He never knocked on the door, as far as we know, unless he threw something across the hallway and started talking. But 
watching the video and listening, the person's at the door. So, while all of this chaos is happening, the students are being taken to a safe place, parents are being called, chaos is happening, they've taken Ethan to the detention center, and now, the parents, the parents. What about this boy's parents? How did he get this gun, and... How did the parents miss all of the signs of their child being disturbed, like mentally disturbed? You're raising a murderer. How do you, how do you miss these things? Like, ah, you can't miss them. You breathe them and then you ignore and then you act like you didn't know. So let's break down how these parents um, are being held accountable and the part that they played in this entire incident. So like I said in the beginning of this video, today is December 3rd, and the parents have officially been charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter, which is definitely justified. Justified. These people need justice. These families need justice. The community needs justice. The school needs justice. And these victims need justice. And the kid did not get the gun on their own. And they had help learning how to use it. So let's break this down. And the school is honestly at fault as well. We're going to get there. We're, oh my God, we're going to get there. Let's go now. Like I'm making this video super long. There are a few days that we need to hone in on. We're going to keep them in order. November 26th up until today. A few days don't matter because we don't have details on those days. I'll fill you in as the story continues developing. But right now, this is what we got. November 26th, Black Friday. Let's make a long story short. Black Friday, James Crumbly goes and buys his son a gun. Uh, 9mm CXR SP2022, to be exact. Bought it probably on sale. Why do they put guns on sale? I don't know, but it's a product, so I guess. Fuck it. I feel like though, shit like that should always be full price. If you really want this, you're going to have to pay for it. There's no deals. There's no sales because shit like this happens. So, they get the gun on Black Friday. The kid goes home and posts a picture. Ethan posts a picture of the gun saying, new beauty, I don't even gotta look this part up because I got notes everywhere. This shit is crazy. The very next day, after he posts a picture of the gun, the very next day, the mother, Jennifer Crumley, posts on Facebook, testing out the new Christmas gift. So clearly, y'all bought this gift for your son. Y'all bought this boy 9mm for Christmas. Not a toy gun, not a BB gun, not a water gun. Not a glue gun so he could do some drag or something. No, y'all bought him a 9mm SP2022. That is what happened on November 27th. I'm keeping these dates together, honey. Yes, yes, yes. November 27th. All right. Let's move on to... We're going to say November 29th, right? So the day before the shooting, because Black Friday, kids don't go to school. They go back to school the following Monday. So the only time that this child could have been in school before the shooting, before the day of the shooting, was literally the day before the shooting. <sighs> November 29th. So this Monday, the school official calls home to mom saying, hey, Jennifer, we found Ethan looking online on the school's computers for gun ammunition. And that's not okay. So we are calling to let you know that. Please call us back immediately because this is some bullshit and absolutely not. But he is also a white kid, so we're just going to leave it at that. Talk to you later, hon. School leaves a message. Jennifer, here's the message. See him. My son is so stupid. She goes, the mother, Mother Crumbly, goes, texts the son, and I have this, I have this, I have this. She says, she texts him, because, you know, the authorities have everything now. They've, they've confiscated this shit because he's being tried as a terrorist. They have the records, child. I wrote this out myself. Jennifer gets the message, told the suspect to, this is what she texts her son, LOL, all caps. I'm not mad at you, comma. You have to learn to not get caught. What are y'all teaching y'all children? Like, I can't even. I can't even take this. You have to learn to not get caught? See, so y'all bought this kid a gun, taught him how to shoot it. He's looking for ammunition at school. 
And then you're like, hey, 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 I know you're trying to find ammunition at your school. You know, we bought you this gun, school gun. But can you not get caught next time? Because they calling my phone. Bothering me. Okay. So that's what mom did on Monday, November 29th. Let's go to November 30th. So on November 30th, <laughs> Ethan goes to, back to school. Now at this point, if I'm a teacher at Oxford High, and I'm not placing blame anywhere, but we got to start being real, real about these situations because the more we ignore the, the missteps that were taken that allowed this event, we're going to be on school shooting number 29, 30, 31, 32. And at this point, I'm not saving nobody. Up until that shit starts happening, you have time to think. You, you, you are paid, you're trained, you are trusted with these, all of these kids' lives. The school officials definitely have to do better. That little boy was not supposed to be able to come back to school the next day. We, we are in high school. If you're looking for ammunition and you're 15 years old and you're in school doing it on school property, that is now being done on school property. This is all a part of school. You, ammunition, school. You can't come, you can't come back. You, you can't come back. You have to get a psych evaluation. It's a lot of shit that needs to be checked off the list before we let you back in these doors, young man. And that's just that. We did a whole year of, of, of school online. You can take them classes online. You're going to sit at home. You're going to do your homework. And you can come back when we say you're ready because you have an issue. And clearly your parents don't care because they haven't called back. It should have been. He won't be admitted into school tomorrow if you don't call us back immediately. But that didn't happen. He went back to school. So it's November 30th, the day of the school shooting. This is the morning time that we're going to talk about right now. So Ethan Crumbly, the suspect, the shooter, is in class. The teacher finds a note saying the voices won't stop and also finds a picture that depicts a gun and someone bleeding. That's how they described the picture because it was that graphic. We don't have the picture. I doubt we'll get it. It's probably going to be in a courtroom and I'm sure that courtroom is going to be sealed. I will be following the story though. But he basically killed somebody in a drawing. So then the school officials said, all right, parents got to come in. The counselor took a picture of the drawing. They scoop up the suspect. Well, he wasn't a suspect at the time, but to me, he's a suspect. <laughs> as soon as you were looking for ammunition, you became a suspect. Suspect number one. So they took the shooter before the shooting. They took him to the office because they're like, uh-uh. I don't know if they communicated that this is the same kid that was looking for ammunition, but thankfully they took him up out that classroom with his book bag and his drawing, took him to the office. His parents had to come to the school. So the parents came to the school. This is all in the morning time. Both of them came to the school, meaning he's supposed to leave with y'all. They, they do some type of talking. They send Ethan back to class with his backpack. Never check the book bag. Never ask his parents. Never ask him, did you bring that gun out the house? None of that. Nothing like that. This ponytail is really giving me Dijonet from the Brown family. Oh my God. But let's stay on topic. They failed. All of these children in this school miserably. And I'm talking about the school, not, not Ethan's parents. Ethan's parents failed him, themselves, and everybody involved, yes. But the school definitely did not do their job in protecting these students before the day of the shooting and the day of. They let Ethan go back to class. His parents left the school. And I lied to you not at 12.51, the cops got the first call. It seemed like as soon as he went back to class, he decided, well, got to do it now. So then that's when I was telling you all surveillance sees him coming out of this restroom, shooting the four students. They also say he was really, he was shooting at close range and he was aiming at the head and the chest area. So he had intent to kill. So let's clip that there. That's what happened on the day of the shooting. They come, they arrest Ethan. Mind you, before they arrest Ethan, I have to make sure. I literally said, let me make sure I don't forget this. The school lets parents know there's an active shooter. At that point, the father goes, damn it, well, I know it's my son. The father immediately goes back home because they probably didn't go straight home after they left their son's school. He goes, checks where the gun is supposed to be. The gun is missing. So the father, James Crumley, 
this crumbs, all them some crumbs, almost got their name. James Crumley calls the police and lets them know, I'm pretty sure my son is the active shooter that is inside the school. Y'all need to get his ass because he knows how to use that gun. He knows. He knows. Y'all should get him ASAP. So, they go to the school. They go to go get Ethan. All of this chaos is taking place. And when they get to Ethan, he has 18 live rounds, including bullets, with the gun loaded. Yep. He had more bullets. He had bullets in the gun. He wasn't stopping no time soon until the police came to get him. So the police came, got him. They took him to the detention center. He was charged with one count of terrorism, four counts of first degree murder. Yeah, yeah, he did that. Seven counts of assault with intent to murder and 12 counts of possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. So let's talk about what these charges mean for this young man. They are charging him as an adult. I'll say that right now, as they should. He is facing a life sentence. Let's say that. But in the state of Michigan, with him being a child, he does not automatically get life without parole. They do have a law that makes it unconstitutional to give a underage person life without parole if you did some crazy shit like that you deserve to life without parole you ended four lives injured seven those people will never get their family members back so i'm going to be following this story this is horrific i'm sure in the upcoming days we'll probably find out a lot on social media from the students that are going to start speaking out a lot of parents that have talked to the free press have said that their kids are, like, at home with, like, this intense shock. They're throwing up. They're nauseous. They're literally not eating. They are not sleeping. They can't imagine a world where they would ever have to go back to that school, which I agree. Girl. Home to the school. School is now home. No. Mm -mm. No. No, 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 no. I just hope and pray that the next video I make about this is saying, they have been found guilty on all charges. And, you know, the city and community is doing their best to help the families that have lost loved ones. And hopefully this community can freaking go back to normal again. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment, share this clip, because I'm sure a lot of people don't know about it. I didn't know all of these details that were going on um, regarding this incident and this school shooting. So definitely share, share with parents, share with uh, y'all kids, just really try to find the signs, talk to y'all friends, no shade, talk to that quiet kid, ask them if they are okay, even if they be mean to you, at least you know. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be following this story, turning your notifications so that you don't miss video because if you miss a video you will miss a lot it's been real and it's been fun Whew, but this one has not been real fun and i will have to catch you in the next one Deuces.